Hello, I'm Daniela. In today's video, I'm going to show you a take on grid journaling that I find very helpful. Now, grid journaling in itself is a very helpful technique to use in your art journal or even on just a layout. Basically, you divide your canvas or your paper or your book up into equal sections. You can do this by folding the paper or just by sketching equal squares within that page or doing a double layout. So for example, you might have four squares on each page, evenly spaced. This presents a very pleasing layout, especially when you're rifling through the book and you're looking at all the techniques that you've used. The idea is to create using the same materials in each of those blocks. Now you'll have multiple little masterpieces on those pages instead of just one. A standard art journal usually has one page. Now there are some variations on that as well. People fold pages and make pockets and add things to the journal. But in one form, you just have two pages when a layout is opened up in a journal. Using the grid formation, though, you can have as many as you can fit in, and you can make small thumbnails or larger ones. Now, the benefit to making multiple thumbnails is that you have lots of opportunity to experiment. You'll basically use the same materials, or at least very close to the same materials, for each of the attempts for each of the blocks inside your journal. Now, in this video, I'll show you a standard layout for grid journaling, your traditional grid journaling. But today's video, the focus is on creating grid journaling that isn't in a grid format. I take the idea of using multiple examples using the same materials on a single page or a layout. In today's video, I'll show you my book where I use simply acrylic paint and then a gel pen or marker at the end. But I use just acrylic paint and the repetitive shape, and I like to use circles for this. The point of this journal, for me, is to just experiment and play. By having multiple examples where I can use the same materials, I can try different techniques. In fact, I strive to try different techniques within the same layout, the same page. I strive not to make the two layouts look identical, or look even close to identical. So that means if I put a red swatch on the top left corner, I'll make sure in the next example that I don't put the red swatch in the top left corner. It's kind of a no-brainer. I'm just avoiding what I would normally do. The idea is that I can then look through the journal in the future and see parts of that technique that worked for me. And if I have eight examples on a layout or even three, chances are I'll find something that I really liked so I can replicate that in further work. And that's one of the benefits of using an art journal. It becomes a reference tool that's personal to you. You've already created the technique, so now you just replicate it, or change it slightly, or adapt it. You take the technique that you really liked, that inspired you, and you make something grand with it. I think the art journals are a very valuable tool. I also have a lot of completed ones and far more uncompleted journals. The beauty of grid journaling or a variation of grid journaling, is it produces a very beautiful result. The pages are neat, usually balanced, and very attractive because the colors coordinate. So let me show you the technique and how I use it in my work. So grid journaling comes in many forms. The basic premise is that you start with a grid. Now on my first page, because I don't really think the first page of my journals are well, they're hard for me to start, so I always throw something in. I always just decide that the first page of my journal, anything goes. So I just made a single mixed media painting here. I have a little collage work and some painting. And I have different tools that I use to make that. But from there, I started my grid journal. So basically, you just create a grid, and you can use that term loosely. You create repeated shapes of the same size, doesn't matter how many, and you just go to town using the same supplies in each of those squares, each of those shapes. It doesn't have to be square, and I'm going to show you that in a moment. But for this journal, I've stuck with squares. I create the squares, and then I just go to town, and I play. I try not to make two of the shapes, the squares, look the same, but I do have the rule that I have to use the same supplies. Now, I don't have to use all of the same supplies all the time. So if on one of these journals, I don't want to put the dots, I don't have to. But for this project, I kind of wanted to. I smeared purple on all of the pages. 
and then I put the dots and the dashes and some little yellow specks and I worked with the same papers. Did the same thing here. Again, it's a mixed media journal, so there's lots going on, but none of the two squares are identical. They just have the same components. Now having the same components makes for a beautiful layout. On this one, I had a full square because I just really was drawn to that. I worked on my smaller ones first, and then I went to my larger one using some of the techniques that I really liked from the smaller ones. It's just something that I played with and I learned from and I enjoyed. And because of this, I could extrapolate further. Same thing here, I work with that big square and then the little squares, and I kind of kept that up for a while. There are lots of layers to these pieces, and that's what makes them so intriguing. Now I can go back and finish any of the pieces that I want to, and here I've already started tracing the layouts for future work. In the pocket, I included a template that I made two templates actually, to trace that larger square and those smaller squares so that I can always go and trace those shapes. Sometimes I'll use a different object to make the shapes, but for this journal, I'm keeping it just like that. But that's not the technique I'm showing in class. If you're interested in learning about the mixed media grid journal, I'd be happy to show you that. For today's video though, we're gonna do a grid journal and again, the term is loosely, we're gonna use circles and we're only gonna use acrylic paint. Now I use the craft store acrylic paints because they're matte finish. So that way when my book is closed, the pages don't stick together. There are some techniques you can use and some products you can use over whatever paint you use so they don't stick. But by using the matte acrylic paint, which are easy to acquire, come in gorgeous colors and are very easy to clean up with, I can avoid that problem altogether. I love that I can mix colors and get different effects. So these are, again, each page uses the same supplies, but I get such different looks with each square or in this case, circle. Now from this one, I painted all these. I was in an odd mood and you can tell because this is not my normal color scheme. And then I had this tag laying around. So I just took those same colors and extrapolated further. Now the tag looks nothing like these, but yet it coordinates because I use those same colors. And I keep it there just to remind me that that's something I might want to do in the future. Here I relied heavily on stencils and I just love the way that looks. Here I was in the mood to create, but I didn't want to create so many. So I created two. And after I created the two, I decided, oh, I really like that shape of those circles. And I wanted to see if I could fill them in. So I just took a gel pen created those circles and just made some design right off the page. Here I have two, again, very simple shapes. I still have to outline them with marker, but they're all made with acrylic paint. I have different color schemes and I really enjoy that. Here I already traced out a grid of four circles. And today we'll create one here. Maybe we'll do three circles. So we start with a blank page. I'm gonna move this over here so you can see my color palette. This page is heavyweight paper. It's a Strathmore journal, but you can use any journal. You can even use a composition book from the dollar store if you'd like. I'd like to use my circle template here, and I'm just gonna sketch out three circles. You can trace around a candle or any type of shape that you want. Just gonna create three circles. And these are gonna be the three circles for the grid that we're gonna make. Technically not a grid, but the same premise. Now, I also like to use stencils in my work. Sometimes I use stencils exclusively. Sometimes I paint and stencil over them. Sometimes I do a combination. So I have stencils here that are really very unusual. I tend to like the stencils that have patterns on them. And this one has four or five different patterns on it, which I love to use. I also love stencils that have letters. I just love text, so I'm drawn to that, so I'll use that. And then I have this new stencil that I wanna try out. Because I know I'm making these grids or these circles small, I looked for stencils with smaller patterns. If I was using a much larger canvas or much larger shape, then I could use the larger stencils. So I have my palette here. 
I have these beautiful five colors. This color is a dark maroon. I know it looks brown a little, but when it dries, it's like a maroon, which I think is really pretty stunning. And these are not my usual colors. The way I chose the colors, I, I just went to my shelf and just grabbed five colors. If they don't work together, then I can always put one back. I'm not really strict about that. Because it's craft paint, it dries quickly, which I love. So I'm gonna start with that orange. And I'm just gonna take a little bit on my brush, not requiring a lot of paint, and I'm gonna color and paint, really just color, some of the area of my circle. Now, I love the fact that this journal has the darker page to it, the color on the page. I just think that's so unusual and so nice because I typically work with white journals. So it is really refreshing and inspiring to use a different colored background page. And then I just paint. I paint within my lines, but I don't take it too seriously. So if something happens and I make a mistake, I'll make that mistake work into the piece. Absolute worst case, if it really bothers me, I can cut out the page. But this is supposed to be an enjoyable procedure that I learned from, so I'm really not trying to take it too seriously. And now for each one, I wanna include paint, that same orange, but in a different spot and a different amount of paint on each one. I like the way that comes out. So for this one, I'm not even gonna go around the edge. I'll just put my orange in the center. Now you can decide how pristine you want your color changes to be. If you want them to be simple layers, or if you wanna go in there and blend out the colors together. I think a combination of that is quite striking. So here I'm taking the yellow, because the yellow and the orange are next to each other on the color wheel, and you can transition between them quite nicely. If you want that color to show up brighter, like I want this yellow to be a little more yellow rather than that orange, I just have to let it dry. Take a little yellow here and just brush it over. And over here, I'll just put it on. So now I can come back in, put a little more, ye more yellow on this piece. And I didn't fill in the entire circle just yet. So now I'll rinse my brush and we'll start another color. So I'm gonna go in here with this corally pink and just paint a little bit on. I'm trying to fill up the shape, not really worrying about the edges. If I want to make sure there's a transition on one of the edges, then I'll do that but right now I don't have anything in mind, so I'm not gonna really worry about it. Just gonna paint on here. Now I almost have this top circle filled with my first layer. And I like how that's coming out. Come back in here, paint just a little more on. Wipe my brush off and then clean that off again. Now, because this is filled in, I can stop adding paint on the first layer, but I don't have to. It's acrylic paint, so I can go back in and paint over it. It gives a different effect, which I really like. I'm gonna come back in here and take a little of this maroon, get it on my brush, and paint around here. And then I think I'll just finish off this piece. This part up here. Really anything goes. I don't have anything in mind. And this is how the creative process starts. This is a good way to start my day. If I don't have something in mind, I can get all my feelings and my anxiety, sleepless night out on the paper and then continue from there. If I just spend 20 or 30 minutes doing this, I consider this a warm-up exercise. Lastly, I'll take that beautiful turquoise color. So 
So you can see how that really pops on this piece here. I'm going to add a little to this piece, right to the edge here, going over that maroon. And I think I want to add a little here. So I'm happy with that. What I like to do, particularly with acrylic paint, is I'll take a piece of paper and I'll just place it over the wet acrylic paint, burnish it lightly, and then pull it up. You can see it takes a little bit of the paint off and it shows a little transparency from where I already put the paint down. And I like that effect. It also helps to dry the paint because I'm removing some of the water and some of the wet layer of paint. So now none of these circles are dry. I can dry them with either a heat gun or a hair dryer on a low setting. But I'm going to just jump right in and start using my next layer of my stencils. So typically I like to start with my largest opening in the stencil. This is a pretty small opening, but there are a lot of them. But over here, these are rather large. So I think I'll start with that. I'm going to take the yellow, I think. And I like to use a little makeup sponge for this and I dab some off. I don't want it to be messy. I'll set it down because I can see right through it and just dab right on top of the stencil. I can go back in with a little more paint, but I never want to have too much paint that it's uncontrollable. And I have just a little texture and a little something added. And I'll go back in over here and do the same thing. So I like that. I like the way that's starting to come together. It also starts to unite the piece. And I'll do it one more time over here. I think I'll kind of do it around here. So I'm really happy with that. So now I want to decide what color I want to use with this stencil. I'm actually very excited to use this stencil. It's new and pristine. I think I'm going to go in there with that coral. I'll dab it onto my makeup sponge. I have a new little makeup sponge here just so the colors don't blend. Not yet, anyway. And now I'm just going to go over where I put the stencil before. Oh, and I like that. I like that contrast. Coming over here on this side, I'm going to cover some of that dark area where I put the maroon. Oh, that's very nice. And I'll do the same thing. And really, I'm just building up layers over here. I'm really liking the way that's coming out. So I'm kind of feeling that this is almost done, almost complete here. I want to make sure that these are dry because I can see that the paint is wet. It's really shiny. So I'll take out my heat tool. If I turn it on, it has a sh shrill noise, but I'll mute that, dry this, and then we'll do our final layer. So now I want to use this text stencil I'm going to take some of this gorgeous teal, it's one of my favorite colors, dab it off, and then I'll just choose some letters to put around here. Start with this one. Again, I'd rather start with less paint on my sponge than more paint. More paint makes a mess, but less paint looks really intriguing. And I can come over here. And I think I want a little bit of a letter over here. It doesn't have to be a full letter. And then something over here. Let's see. Maybe I'll turn it to the side. There we go. I'm quite happy with this. I'm looking at it and seeing it's a little dark, but that's just fine because with acrylic paint, you can add a layer of white or a layer of light color. I'm going to use a white gel pen. I'll show you how I do that. But first, I'm going to go through it and make sure it's dry again. So now that my piece is dry, I like to take a micron pen and just go around the edge just to outline it. And it doesn't have to be a perfect outline. It doesn't have to be on the exact spot. 
I can even do it twice on different spots. It gives just an interesting look. Because this is an art journal, it's something I'll refer back to. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be done and it has to give me ideas. So from here, only because I really want to lighten it up, I'm going to take this white gel pen and I'm just going to create shapes. Maybe I'll just outline these a little bit. It just breaks up the darkness. And even though it's yellow and orange, it's still kind of dark. So you can see that really makes it pop. Over here, I'll just make some dashes. That's just something I really like to do in my artwork. The solid lines up against these smooth shapes, I think are really intriguing. And the same thing over here. I already outlined those, so I don't think I wanna outline that, but maybe I'll outline these pink flowers over here. And this is just how I change it up. And by doing this, I can see the effect that it gives. And if I really like that, or if I don't, and sometimes if I don't, it's a little more valuable. I can just make a few dots in this section over here, maybe just coming down through it. So I like that, it's a little bit of movement. So on lastly, on this one, I think I'm gonna outline the letters. This gives me just a little bit of a variation on all three, which is nice because even if I don't particularly care for one thing that I'm doing, I'm learning what it looks like. And this is why it's such a valuable resource for me to have this notebook. And I actually have at least a dozen notebooks at any one time. I'm gonna go back and outline at least one of these flowers. I'm really happy with that. I think I'll make some lines here. And again, I'm just kind of drawn to doing this right now. It might not look the greatest, but it might spark something in my mind. So now I have another page done in my grid journal, my round circle grid journal. So that's my version of grid journaling using acrylic paint. At the end, I use a little bit of a marker and a gel pen just to add some highlights to break it up if I feel it's necessary, if the painting's too dark, or it doesn't have enough small designs in it, or if I want to add some lines in the last minute and change it around. I also don't hesitate to go off the image and take notes or make little examples of things that sparked something in me that I saw in that technique that I used. Now, most of the examples that I like kind of just come about they're nothing really intentional. They certainly could be, and that's a great way to practice techniques that you want to definitely work on, but it doesn't have to be. It's kind of a fun little journal of unexpected wins, little sparks that you can carry around in a book. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. And please consider becoming a member of my channel. I give behind the scenes footage and additional art techniques. Plus, there's a whole library of techniques you can look up. Thanks for joining me today.